Thank you for checking out my video. I really love Hatsune Miku and enjoy sharing some of that dedication by making videos all about her. To improve my content, I decided to launch my own Patreon page, where you can support me if you feel like Miku's magic reached you by watching them, with neat rewards waiting too. Link in the description. Well, that's all, and now enjoy the new video. Hey guys, thank you to Miku again. Thank you as always for checking out my newest video. I can't believe it. What you're looking at right now is the last Miku Live concert review I can do for now. We will have a look at this gem. Just look at the box. It's so beautiful. Magica Meter 2015. Let's check it out. I can't believe that just over half a year later after I started with my Miku Live reviews, it's already time for the final one. For now, since we will of course review Magica Meter 2017 once that happened and the Blu-ray is released. Today though, we check out Magica Meter 2015, the third meter event. For the first time that year, the event took place on multiple days, from September 4th to 6th, 2015, which would become the standard from that point on. Three concerts were held in the legendary Nippon Budokan in Tokyo, which is really special. It's kind of the holy grail for a musician to be able to perform in this hall with all of this history. Close to the venue in a place called Science Museum, the exhibition was available for everybody to enjoy all kinds of Miku art, other events and of course buy a lot of merchandise. So what did they change for the concert? After the year prior polished the meter formula, still the same old songs? Let's find out by putting ourselves in the perspective of one of the 7000 spectators, one of which was myself for each of the concerts. Also, since this is the last one, I will quickly rank the 7 of them I reviewed in detail at the end of this. Oh yeah, you can easily tell that you're in a legendary venue. This one is easily recognizable by the big Japanese flag visual there many shots. I just love seeing Miku performing here with all of her loyal fans united under it, even if you're not Japanese. Each of them are screaming for Miku as ambient music plays and the trademark Magica Meter Cube moves around on the top screen. They decided to play it safe for that year and open with a classic tag word. After an extended intro of that, Miku finally appears. But don't worry, this concert won't be all old stuff again. This is a good way to start with this emotional song featuring amazing Miku tuning. Just in general, for the old songs returning, we'll just quickly go over them, check out my Meter 2014 review to get more info for most of them. A small change is the strange castle that is displayed on the top screen. There are a few tracking shots showing this in detail for some reason. The audience is very loud this time, nice, good opening. The first new song, as well as a teaser for Percy by X, which was first revealed just days before the event. It's not one of my favorite songs, but I like that it has a lot of energy, including a lot of cheering from the audience. Unfortunately, Miku doesn't wear the corresponding costume she would one year later. I love the yellow and red light show during the chorus a lot and a powerful dance during it. This song was a complete surprise, it wasn't on the CD release prior to the event. I love how they do it now, release a CD with new songs to look forward to live as well as having complete surprises. Of all the Pinocchio P songs live, this is my favorite one without a doubt, I just love it. Since it was also a surprise, I was so hyped to hear that live. It features a wacky dance right at the start. The verses just make me happy because of their tone. The best moments are always the build ups to the chorus and the whole crowd would cheer together for Miku. Really now, these moments are so fun live. The chorus is a very memorable one, also including a nice bow from Miku as well as a gesture meaning don't shoot just yet, directed at some aliens. Yeah, funny lyrics, check them out. After a nice bridge, the final chorus is in a higher pitch, making it stand out even more. Just watching this while taking notes, I can't stop myself from moving. Land this gem, Miku once again performs a silly dance, ending with a nice pose. Miku waves to the audience and calls out Kombanwa, of course getting a loud reaction back from the audience, welcoming her too. Her expressions are very cute, but believe me, all of this is nothing compared to what happens much later in the gig. This was the only song I didn't know at all when it was played live. Very different feel, kind of melancholic, featuring a heavy bass line and a nice app and Miku tuning. The chorus is just plain cool. Just have a look at her dance and a perfect light display supporting it. I came to like this one quite a bit, the atmosphere is very unique. The part where Miku goes around clapping her hands in the slow section is interesting too as well as the moves following. Definitely a very different song, I like it. It's weird. I love the producer of this song, for the meter P, but after Karekuri period from the years prior, this is the next work of his I don't enjoy it that much. Still, definitely a better pick, it's a great song. Miku's tuning is as good and real sounding as you would expect from the author. The chorus makes me wanna move. This one yet again has such a cool light show, certainly put a lot of work into it. Nice to look at this yellow and purple light, improves the atmosphere a lot. I also enjoy the instrumental while Miku's dancing. Love how Miku ends by singing Guilty, posing yet again. I think you can see by now that this gig has a very different set list. 
Miku already makes room for somebody else. Len kicks off the amazing non-Miku section for this year with a song featuring questionable lyrics. Len shows off his fast singing skills in the verses before the extremely catchy chorus. This is one of the best Len songs live ever for sure. Check out the lyrics if you want yourself, but just have a look at his movements to see what's going on. Yeah, let's just say he didn't feel like using a condom. I'm not kidding. The crowd cheers on Len during the cool solo, just wow. Sound like that for a 14 years old boy? What will his sister I didn't think about that? What does she think? Why she looks pissed? What an opening! Lin comes on stage, destroys her guitar screaming! This is a very popular Lin song, which can easily tell by all the cheering. You can feel the energy in her singing the verses or just by looking in her eyes. Then the chorus. She's moving all over the place, uses the speakers as a platform. You don't wanna get in her way now! During the solo you can get a glimpse of how much fun the band has during the gig. Very nice to see. Near the end, Lin throws away her mic too for the final part, with a lot more screaming from the audience. What energy, just wow! It doesn't get any less interesting. I was originally so sad to find this one on the official event city because it would mean the cut of Suki Kirai, another Lin and Len duet I love a lot. But this here is such a perfect live song. It's also the full version, which is much cooler than the cut one included in Projiva F. The intro alone gets you ready for it. Everybody starts screaming as soon as the two siblings move along together. While singing, the story is once again portrayed nicely by all the dance moves. Definitely an amazing choreography. Did I say this was a good live song? Just see for yourself. In the chorus, there's this part where everybody screams yeah together. Next, there's even some funny walking and Len performs some sort of sick move. Lin doesn't even budge at all for wearing this. It's also well made. Near the end, they use a big part of the stage as Lin breaks along her brother. Just a fantastic live song. Even though I love Tsukuki Dan. I really want to go through all of the non Miku stuff right away, it seems. Now it's Mako's turn with a good song of hers for once? Yeah, this one is kick ass. Unfortunately, she isn't wearing that amazing sexy outfit from the game, which was fixed for Mita 2016. She shows off her cool voice in here and even gets her place in the spotlight when everybody's cheering for her in the part leading up to the chorus. Her singing is so high pitched that it even hurt live. Strange, never an issue for Miku songs. Was always improved a year later. That solo though, one of the guitarists seems to enjoy playing it a lot. So even though not quite as thrilling this year, still overall a great Mako song for once. Even Kaito gets something new. As I said, this is an almost all new Mirai. The song isn't amazing, but it's already saying a lot that Kaito actually sounds kind of good. Very fitting he's wearing his scarf with the winter theme going on, visible by the steam effect. He also performs a weird move with slacks that the ladies might have enjoyed. Even his solo singing sneak, so wow! Actually an enjoyable song. Both Meiko and Kaito got good ones, which is rare, even though Mirai 2016 made it even better. Man, I love this song. In F second world was also included and it's both an extremely fun chart and an amazing video. The same can be said for the song itself, Miku's voice sounds so seductive and mean in a way. I like it a lot. So while I was glad to see this live, it wasn't quite as great on stage. First missed opportunity, they didn't use the correct costume. Funny thing, during one of the shows there was a Japanese girl next to me, cosplaying as the Miku with that outfit. Maybe she stole it from Miku. Yeah, the lack of the usage of new costumes is a flaw in this concert in general. Also a bit boring performance for this one. Other than that, the coolest part might be the speed up in this song. Very hard for the band. When we met some of these guys before Amigo Expo in San Francisco, they taught us this was the hardest song for them to play. So overall, amazing song, even if not quite as kick ass as it could have been. I have to tell you right now that from here the quality of the concert drops a bit. While most of what's next will be great songs, it's back to old stuff from now. I will not go into too much detail for these, but I'll share more about these in my other reviews. So this is a Mida classic, probably the best performance of the ambient and emotional song yet, mainly because of the atmosphere. It always makes me happy to see everybody cheering on the virtual idol. It has never been as loud for this song. Great classic Mida song. For the third time, Sweet Devil returns as well. You can see we're in the classic section now. I try to be quick. You all know I love this song and Miku's tsundere attitude it portrays. It's interesting how the same song can feel so differently depending on the placement in the concert. We went from an opening song to the encore opener to the middle of it. For some of the old songs, they changed a bit of the animations. When nothing like that was done here, the instrumental still sounds a bit unique each time. The costume is so great. A shame they didn't bring more from the new song. Amazing one, but still good that 2016 would bring a different Hachi OGP song. Well, this one I love even more. As I said millions of times before, this is my anthem for 2D Girls. Check out my 2013 and 2014 reviews for more, but for now let's just sit back and enjoy a bit more than usual of this song.
you can really especially tell it for the opening for this one. In all three concerts it has been so far, the instrumental doesn't sound unlike at all. Well, this is yet another great song, I wish they would have spread out the classics more and saved more of the new stuff for later in the concert. Comparing it to the performance one year prior, you can easily tell it's not all copy and paste by looking at the light show. The yellow colors are very cool for this year, they still tweak the old stuff. Again, the cheering solo are really something I love about this recording. It's a lot of Miku fans united together in that legendary venue. The instrumentation in Miku's solo singing part has changed up a bit as well. I like how they have a close up of Miku's cute kitty like part on the top screen. Another old song, but a bit of a different case. This one originated in mid 2013 but was skipped for 2014 for a good reason, as I thought. I'm not the biggest fan. Without the band interaction the original featured, it is not that interesting to look at either. The chorus is kinda nice and powerful still, followed by the part where everybody screams alright. Still weird this return from 2013. Wow, a different kind of classic, not from one of the meters, but from the Countryside Mikupa concerts. I love it! You can tell by the reaction that everybody knows the song. A good move to bring back the very classics. I hope a lot of cool stuff will return this year too. As this is the first meter performance, they changed it up a bit by having a virtual stage layer. Unfortunately, Nico isn't wearing the fitting costume. Again! Man, that cheering. I know I'm repeating myself, but it just makes me tear up, especially before the chorus. I love the song and what it stands for. Brilliant. <laughs> So far the Mida classics were great, but they could have skipped this in my opinion, a ballad that just isn't that good to me. But the audience moves differently this year, all going left and right with their glow sticks. That is kinda neat, even if it was extremely tiring life, believe me. Well, in essence, it's good to have a new song again, but kinda mean that Luca's new song doesn't even have her in the focus that much. The idea is great, don't get me wrong. Having Luca as the DJ on stage is really cool. The song is catchy, but doesn't achieve that much impact live. It's only okay, and Luca's solo parts are far too quiet. And the one solo she's louder in, she does sound alright. It's funny that even when Luca stands solo, if you look at Miku near the end of it, it still looks so much like Miku's in control. Like she has so much more experience and still is in the lead. Just look at how confidently she moves. Well, no wonder. Cool song, but nothing amazing. Mainly the idea was nice. Gives me hope for songs like decorator with all six vocalists or Hikyo Senta Erotanda if supporting vocalists without much text aren't a problem. Maybe this year. Yeah, you can see that we're in the part of the concert I would consider a bit weak. Luca's solo song is not only an old one, but also one of my least favorite songs in general. Only cool aspects are the interaction, moving along with Luca, and the fact that this is the full version of the song. I would have hoped for better for Luca, but I know that this year there will be at least one song of first life I will absolutely love. The band needs to get a little solos of course. It's a neat happy beat, but there's no Miku. All solos are nice to watch. Always kinda weird to see many basses wearing a glove on one hand. For better sound I guess? It's funny that you can always see a tiny part of the setlist on close-ups of the keyboard is smacked me. But that second guitarist, I'm glad to see him having so much fun. Actually, I hope all of them return, already an important part of the concerts in my opinion. One thing is missing, the call out for Miku, definitely a mess up. Then they transitioned right into Shake It. Of course this is one of the returning ones too, has been in every meter so far, definitely a fun one, but I don't think it should return for this year, only one will hopefully return for a fifth time in a row. Anyway, it seems like the song reaches its peak for this performance, the audience one more time doesn't disappoint with their reaction, the chorus is just so colorful, like a big party, well it technically is, the whole Budokan is united in one big oh yeah. A cool tweak, unlike previous years, Miku rushes ahead in one part, when it was previously I was heard I was left behind, notice that one immediately laughed and it made me smile, just shows the laugh put into those. Really no reason for the change in an old song, but I did it anyway. I think the organizers usually can tell when a song has been played enough live nevertheless. Very surprising. Of all the early classics, I wouldn't have expected to hear the full version of Package Live for the first time. The last time that song was played live at all was at the original Miku Park from 2011. Not the biggest fan of the song, a bit boring in my opinion, but one good friend of mine was very happy to hear it. Right Justin? This year I hope some of my wishes will come true, speaking of old songs. I honestly think I never heard this full version before, so it was still quite an experience. All of Miku's moves are pretty nice. Man, the concert used to be so different back then. With so many short versions, now it's always the full one. Which do you guys prefer? For me it's how it's done now. Oh, they're really playing it safe now. 
even one of the most famous vocalist songs ever. I don't mean it too negatively, but honestly, this one isn't one of my favorites either. Still a cool one. I'm sure a big part of the audience was happy to hear it. Melt for this year, please. Again, it's the full version for the first time. Miku's moves are super cool and the crowd joins singing Oh Him and Sama. There's Miku's great Max Scream and then the second verse with cute movements imitating riding a horse. All of this makes me like the song more. In the solo part, her dance is as cool as ever. I wonder, did she have to practice this one or did she still remember it from back then? So yeah, even if not one of my most liked classics, it's still the best performance of it ever, mainly because of the full version. It all ends with another scream. Yep, that song again. I love the tuning, the emotions and the usage of the full stage when Miku runs around in the chorus as well as the emotional part later on before it ends with an all out. What else can I say? I love the song, but it was a bit too much to have this return as the final song before the encore again. Also, this is the second duo song back to back, very different one though. Let's just enjoy this. At the end, there's the usual celebration and cheering. <laughs> Right away, everybody screams for more Miku. It's not terribly loud in the recording. The band must be like, gee, give us a break. The theme song. Yes, I love this one so much, I can't even put it into words. When I think of Magica Media 2015, I think of this. Heck, when I think of Miku, it's one of the first songs that comes to mind. While watching it for the review, I immediately increase the volume. This song is just happiness and Miku love. So much cheering. Miku's voice and moves, and very fittingly, the united hands on the top screen. I love the Miku community so much, I can tell you, it's just so much fun at the events. There's no hate like in the sports community like there is for different musical styles. Everybody screams hand in hand together, all with the common love for Miku. But it doesn't even matter if Miku isn't your personal favorite. The slow part just makes me focus on the moment even more, it's so emotional. I love you Miku. After another chorus, it's time for another celebration of Miku and the event, as Miku even gives us a heart as a present. This tune is just unreal. So perfect in the memory of one of my happiest moments in life. It ends with another very adorable pose. Yeah, never cut that one please, it means so much to me, such an emotional song to thank Miku. This version stance isn't quite as good, it's the static one where Miku does move around on stage. The pictures on the top screen are there again of course, the Sankyu scream is the loudest one ever yet. The final Sankyu comes with the confetti during the song, very impactful. You can see parts of the audience in the final scream, which is nice. So even if the dance was less interesting and the amazing speech from Leslie was missing prior to the song, still again one of the best moments ever. I wanna experience this Sankey scream together with a certain Irishman this year together. By the way, do you guys think Ireland will ever join the European Union? Please prepare. I always say that emotional words from Miku are important to me. And this certainly delivers. After some loud screams for more, Moe Kai to be precise, Miku bows and then starts speaking in a perfect tuning. And her expressions! First, she tells us that she's very happy that we all made it here, before saying the words I remember being so happy about life. Minna Daisuki. That means, I love you all. You don't think that's so special? For me, the occasion, her embarrassed look that follows and the words together were just magical. This was the most emotional Miku speech ever. Please have something like this for this year, a speech thanking for 10 amazing years. Then, she announces the final song. Hmm, isn't this kind of a boring song? It sucked when it returned for Persia X, right? Well, to be honest, I mostly skipped this in my playlist myself, but live? This was the perfect way to end this concert. It is so special because the whole audience joined Miku singing, since the lyrics were displayed on the top screen. I honestly tear up just writing this review. This was such a powerful moment. Her expressions are top notch and it's just her voice and a bit of piano together with the whole crowd. Luckily, I could read most of the lyrics. After the first chorus, more instruments join in for the second half. I can't stop the tears for the second chorus with more instruments. This just proves that it's not all about the songs, but also so much about how they are portrayed. I mean, I love Embry Catwalk a lot more, but this was far more special life. Miku ends with such a lovely look on her face, so gentle and perfect. They nailed that aspect for sure. Amazing finish of a concert and a moment I will never forget. Singing together with Miku and the fans. Wow. Incredible.
The end is a very cool one too. Miku bows, waves to the audience. She stays for quite a bit this year to give us a chance to celebrate him some more. Hand in hand comes on, which has such an emotional power for me. Then it's time to say goodbye, followed by a loud cheer. A thank you Budoka message is displayed before everybody screams hey, 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 with a loud voice in the beat of the song, before it cuts to the credits. Believe me, this went on for a long time. Then the credits with that amazing song. Such a perfect end. The verdict. Let's look at the visual first. Miku looked crystal clear as always and the big top screen with some cool effects return as well. The light show was even better than usual, with many amazing effects supporting the mood of each song. The whole band was again on the same level as Miku, which is how it should be. Speaking of them, many return and are just good musicians, who also managed to put on a light show for the audience, supporting the star of the night Miku. After 2014 only had one guitarist, there was two of them again, the second one especially really was tons of fun watching on stage. The audience was amazing, you could hear them very loud for most of the time. No wonder, the venue was the legendary Nippon Budokan, I think the magic of it just got transferred to the crowd. One aspect I absolutely loved about this concert was Miku's bond with the spectators. Her tuning was spot on, cute but easy to understand and she said a few heartwarming words. Especially before the final song there was a speech I will never forget, which was made even better because of Miku's incredibly cute expressions while talking, not even mentioning the strong bond singing the final song together with her. They didn't do any of that as well the year later, so please let Miku talk similarly to here in this year's anniversary concert. I am tearing up just by thinking about the possibility. This concert definitely had the best Miku bond with the audience of any of them. So, the setlist. After Mita 2014 polished the feel of the Mita concerts, they now changed up the song list for the first time for quite a bit. They had a good mix of cool new songs, while even bringing back some absolute classics from far earlier concerts, some having their full versions played for the first time. The non Miku section was amazing apart from the Luca songs. Unfortunately, they didn't really have new costumes for the new ones, which was definitely a letdown, improved quite a bit a year later. Apart from a few exceptions like the amazing theme song, one of my favorite songs of all time, they had too many of the new stuff at the start of the gig, before having most of the old stuff back to back. Around the middle of the concert there was quite a section I didn't care for personally, followed by a few too many classic songs in one go. The encore was amazing again though. Bit of a shame the audience didn't get to call up Miku's name after the band member introduction. That's everything! The important aspects were nailed just like in the previous year and things were kept fresh by having a lot of new songs while including some old classics. Definitely a great concert, but because of some choices in the setlist I didn't care for much, the quality dropped a bit midway through, I wouldn't say that it was one of Miku's best concerts. Still very enjoyable though, especially live. Wow, I'm really done with my look at all the Miku concerts for the moment. Because I checked them all out now, I thought I'd end by quickly ranking all of the 7 I dedicated an individual review to, only looking at the concert, not my experience of the trip connected to it for the ones I attended myself. Just keep in mind, the last place is still not a bad concert. I enjoyed them all, some more, some a bit less. Also, there are of course tons of other Miku concerts I only quickly covered in my review called A Lot of Miku, including 27 of them, most of which are less interesting than these 7, like the Miku Expos which are generally lower production value, or some of the Miku Pass. Last place would be the original Magica Meter 2013. It was important, changed a lot of aspects and had an all new set list, but made many mistakes in the process. For more details on any of these, check out my full reviews of course. Next would be the original Countryside from 2010. Can also say that it was very important obviously, and got many things right already, but it's still one of the less enjoyable ones to watch in my opinion. Right after that I have to put the Countryside from 2012. A lot of people love it a lot, but I can't put it higher on the list because of the strings arrangement I didn't like and quite a few songs I didn't care for. Next would be Meta 2015 I just reviewed, followed by Meta 2016. Very cool set list with even more new stuff than 2015, almost no old ones, but also a few too many songs I didn't care for. Magica Meta 2014 is just an extremely polished concert with an amazing set list and also the first one I attended, so it's pretty special. The number one spot is still the Miku from 2012 in Tokyo, which had pretty much no flow for me. Great presentation and most importantly a set list that I just love to death. Oh yeah, the ear concert? Would still be the worst one out of all of them, but it's an entirely different story. Still a cool concert. So there you go, I'm officially finished for now. I hope I was successful in sharing my love for these amazing Miku concerts just a bit. Really being there and experiencing it for yourself is yet another story together with Miku. I'm looking forward to Miku's 10th anniversary for Magica Meter 2017 a lot. Until then, why not just sit down and watch one of the old ones? So that really does it for now. Thank you for watching to the very end. I hope this was another enjoyable look at the Miku Live concert. And also maybe my ranking of them wasn't too boring to watch. If you enjoyed this video, you can give it a thumbs up, comment, share with your friends, and of course, subscribe to my channel, which is all about Miku, to never miss Miku videos like that again. So until next time for another video, and also, of course, at the end of the year, the review of Magica Meter 2017. Have a nice Miku day!